Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell with the Jay Campbell Podcast. I got to get used to doing that. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio all the way from Colombia, Shane Dow. Shane, how are you, my friend? I am doing excellent. Thank you for having me. It's awesome to have you. So guys, um, Shane is a very, very accomplished former fit bro who is now a mobility bro, if I can call him that. Actually, he's the CEO and founder of gotrom.com and the FAI fix com and truthfully he helps people fix injuries and get flexible online but that's not the best part about him even though that's pretty amazing he's a very advanced spiritual guy like myself so who knows where this podcast is going to go uh, but there are no coincidences in life and he showed up today um, as the universe in intended him to show up today. And so I have a feeling that this podcast is going to be really, really good. Uh, but as I do on the Jay Campbell podcast, Shane, uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I'd like to find out from the great Shane Dowd, how did you get on the Jay Campbell podcast here today? I am always looking for brothers on the path, looking for people that are kind of vibing at my frequency. Um, just people with shared values and talking about things that I care about. And so I came across you and sent you a message and you graciously decided to have me on the podcast and here we are. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And, and, and truthfully, as I was telling you off the air for the listening audience, my podcast funnel is really stacked right now. And I'm like dealing with like people saying, Hey, when's my podcast going to run? You know, and between my company and me, it's just like, well, you know, I usually will just like, just throw it away and say, my company determines that. I'm sorry. That's what I paid them for. But you know, now it's kind of like, well, look, you know, and they're lobbying, but you know, I got this program to give away to your audience. So it's kind of like a game that I'm playing right now. But uh, as I said to you off air, there was something about not saying no to you. I originally, I was like, Shane, you know, I'd love to do it, but honestly, man, it's so long. It's going to take a while for you to run. And you were right back and you were just were high energy. You know, uh, I would say spiritually advanced. I felt your energy. It was like, no, it's cool, man. No problem. Let's do it. And I was like, let's do this. So, yeah. and truthfully, you are the, I swear again, no coincidences, you are the last podcast that I'm going to do for at least a month because I'm going into a writing cave and mm -hmm. I have to finish my book, Raising Your Vibration. And it's going to be the best thing I've ever done and the podcast can wait. However, that said, um, I do want to talk to you about spirituality today because I know it's going to be good, but let's talk a little bit about your business and who you are and how you've come to get on this podcast today. So, Let's talk about your back injury because obviously you had a, a, a bout where you were seriously injured and it caused a hip impingement, but also obviously it caused you to really reevaluate your position in life from being a fit bro, correct? Yep, exactly. Yeah. I was at the time um, working as a strength and conditioning coach in a gym and a personal trainer, living that fit bro life. And uh, it actually was the hip impingement that caused the back injury, but I didn't know that at the time. I just, I was doing a power clean in the gym. I have it on video. I have it on my YouTube channel so you can see me injure my back. And it doesn't look bad on camera. It's like perfectly neutral spine. Stuart McGill would be happy. Then, <laughs> Stuart McGill. You know, Stuart's a buddy of mine, by the way. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, he's like a, that's awesome. He's a premier yeah. low back researcher, but yeah. so I had been well trained in like how to lift things. I had great mentors and everything was perfect, but the underlying mechanics were off because I had femoral acetabular impingement or FAI or just simply called hip impingement. Right. So my bone shape was weird and therefore my car, my vehicle was driving skewed kind of crooked. Sure. So even if you're driving it perfectly, if it's out of alignment, wear and tear happens. So that caused my back injury led me on this sort of like long deep dive journey of physical therapy, yoga, all the healing modalities, all the stretching modalities. I was doing hours and hours in a day of sort of like self-care mobility. I found Kelly Starrett, found Ido sure. Portal, a bunch of these great teachers and um, just digested like hours a day of their information and a lot of self-practiced a lot, not like reading a textbook and then you know, it was like embodied practice of like, how do you sure. fix pain in your body? So I did that for years, started teaching it, and then created my first program about femoral acetabular impingement, hip impingement called the FAI fix. And um, that took off, did really well. And I was like, oh, people really are looking for help with how do you get more mobile? How do you fix injuries and, and do that online? It's kind of like the old model used to be just go to a physical therapist and hopefully they fix you and all the powers in their arms. 
But I think there's been like a mobility revolution, which has its pros and cons, but basically it's cool that people now have the tools to fix their own pain and injuries. And I'm one of the people helping people do that. That's awesome. I mean, I have a lot of questions around that and I do, we're going to get deep into spirituality, but um, you're actually, as, as am I, um, we're very blessed right now because obviously this podcast, just for everybody who watches it, because it's going to run later is we are what? It's May 7th, correct? God, time is flying. Time is flying as the spiritual central sun energy envelops the planet and we ship. No, I'm sorry. Just, we'll get to that. Um, but, but seriously, um, this is an advantage for people like me and you because the world has now shifted to where gathering in public or gathering in person is now, you know, because of this nonsense, whatever you beliefs may or may not be um, about it is you know, going to be looked at with disdain or with a lack of acceptance like it used to be previously. I'm talking about gyms. I'm talking about giant convocation centers, rehab facilities, you know, mobility wads. I mean, th those type of places are going to be, you know, slow to get to back to where they were. So what you do and what I do, obviously coaching people, working with people online is huge. So just, I want you to, you know, again, because I obviously I don't know as much about you as I probably should. Uh, I will though after this call, um, after this podcast, but the big separator for me uh, as, cause as you know, there's a lot of fraud online. The big separator for me is always to be able, and I, and I tell people that I work with and that I recommend or mentor or whatever, that it's important that you're working with a person that truly knows their stuff. It's important that you work with a quote unquote master, someone who's not only put in the time, but is obviously a living representat representative of their work, right? You know, you've heard the story, you, you practice what you preach, you walk the walk or talk the walk. Um, I feel that younger people today because they grew up in an age of technological enslavement, because that's all this is, right? I mean, we could go deep and debate it and stuff. There's value that comes from, from technology because you and I are having this amazing podcast thousands of miles away from each other. But at the same time, most people who grew up in a time where they had only technology, and you're kind of above that, right? But my generation, I never even had a computer until I was out of college. I graduated from college without ever using the internet. But younger people today have just been born into this. And so they really truly cannot grasp who is a master. There's so much utter bullshit. You know, the signal to noise ratio online is insanity, right? And so, so many young guys, when I talk to them and ladies, when I speak with them, they're always like, yeah, but why would I trust you over so-and-so or, you know, blank and certain hundred people. And it's like, I realize, and I want you to speak to this, I realize that younger people today really do lack discernment because of technology. And what I've seen, even with my young daughters who are 10 and 12, is most people today, younger people especially, want to get from point A to point B and don't give a shit about what's in between. And as you and I both know, walking the spiritual path, it's the journey, not the destination that matters. And so if you don't learn between point A to point B, how are you going to actually teach someone you know, for in, in your example, like how to be more flexible, how to have better mobility, how to have core strength and functionality. So I want you to kind of answer that question. So how is that for you? And I know your answer is going to be amazing, but how is that for you to overcome? Because that's clearly an obstacle for younger people. Yeah. I mean, it's tricky because like you said, like literally anyone can get online and say that they're an expert in such and such and this and that and the other thing. And it just dilutes everything. This happens in the personal training industry. This is happening now with meditation, something that I'm sure Absolutely. we're going to talk about. Yeah. Everyone is a meditation teacher now. Everyone yeah, is an expert. Everybody uses plant medicine too, bro. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, really, I mean, there's like signs that you can look for. I mean, I give an unusual amount of mm, value to just like listening closely to someone and just seeing how authentically what they're saying feels to me. And of course there can be charismatic people that sound really good and they're just completely full of it as well. But you can tell a lot just by the energy coming through someone's voice um, and what they're saying and, how, and how, how much it matches your experience. Like for example, I talked about FAI earlier. I think the reason why our program about hip impingement did really well is because I actually lived through that. Like I had hip impingement and I fixed it on my own without surgery. And usually it said, you know, you need surgery or maybe go to physical therapy. Like there's not many options. But having struggled and fought my way through the dark woods of that 
pretty severe problem where like I was in such pain that my girlfriend at the time was putting on my socks and shoes. Having lived through that, when I now speak about it, I'm not thinking about a textbook. I'm not thinking about the, the prevailing theory. I'm just sharing what I actually lived through. So one, I think you can kind of just hear it in someone's voice. And then there's other like kind of signs that you can look for. You can like, if you're trying to learn from someone about flexibility, are they flexible themselves? And two, were they born that way? Because there's a lot of like really right. flexible like yoga teachers that will confess like I have like hypermobility syndrome, but I teach flexibility. I'm like, <laughs> right. do I really want, I mean, it's always been easy for you. So what's right. the point? Right. So has the person actually gone from terrible to something kind of impressive? Often they say that the, um, the best players don't make the best coaches. Sometimes the Absolutely. mediocre players become the best coaches because they had to fight and learn the principles and learn how to systematize what they did so they could teach it to other people. So, um, so that's another thing. And then, then there's kind of things that you can look at, like at the students of the person that you're considering as a mentor or a coach. How do their students look and move and feel? Do they have good reviews? Are the reviews authentic or not? Like you can go to my website and see a bunch of video reviews of people just sharing how they, what they think about my programs. And there's literally like probably close to a hundred of them. Um, so it's kind of like on Amazon, you go on Amazon and you check the reviews, but not all reviews are kind of made equal. Some of them are like, eh, it seems a little fishy or whatever, but if it's like a video of someone just sharing their real raw experience of that teacher, that's one sign that you can use. So right. it's like you have to add it all together, like their credentials, their background, their journey, their authenticity when they speak, their customers, their clients, the reviews, all of that will add up. And But you have to kind of look at them for a while. You're not going to know in the blink of an eye if someone's the real deal or not. It's like you have to kind of look at them for a while and, and then you'll know. Hey guys, it's Jay Campbell. I get a lot of people reach out to me these days and say, Jay, I'm not a reader. Can you make your, your books into videos or audio. Yes, I have finally done that. Guys, I now have webinars, premium content webinars once a month, usually at the last Thursday of every month, but sometimes the third Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Thursday evenings. You can access all of the previous webinars, which they have been amazing, at totrevolution.com forward slash webinar. Keep looking there. That's where we do our premium content webinars. They're always hosted there. You can always download them and watch them after the fact. Absolutely insane content, gold level intel, usually two and a half hours or longer with exceptional guests. Please check it out, the webinar section, totrevolution.com forward slash webinar. And everything you say, you have a real calmness about you. And, and you know, I don't want to blow smoke up your ass, but I'll blow smoke up your ass. You definitely have the, the wise... Um, sense of a master. And again, I don't really know you, but I just know from speaking with you that you've done the work, bro. bro. I'll give you that. I, I can definitely tell. You did say something that I had never heard in my life. So I always love to learn something new. Every time I do a podcast, you said hyper mobility syndrome. Is that what it was? Or hyper mobility? What was it? Just a person being hyper mobile. Like there's a lot of um, <laughs> like those Instagram yoga jointed. teachers. No, but those people that are yeah. like double jointed and they can pull their elbow behind their head and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like people That's that were just born like brutally, brutally strong. Like the first time I ever bench pressed, I bench pressed 300 pounds or something. Let right. me tell you how to get strong. I mean, right, right, it doesn't right, discount right. that you can't be genetically gifted right, and have a good right. system that you teach. Sure. But I, I more am impressed and want to follow someone who had to work for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 totally. So um, one of the other points we were going to cover before we get into spiritual stuff is the mobility revolution. And obviously I'm a big fan of Kelly Starrett. Um, you know, myself, um, 20 minutes, well, not now, right? Cause I'm doing pushups in my garage, but, tw but 20 minutes of my workout, which I am very, very religious three days a week is my weight training. But 20 minutes of that is mobility. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, I'm in my office right now and I have two, you know, foam rollers here. I have, you know, the little, what, do you, what is the little ninja thing, you know, that I put on my neck. I mean, I'm, I'm all about that. And obviously I've been all about that since I learned about it when I was like your age, you know, you're 35, I'm 49. So I mean, like, and that was right when it was coming out when people were just starting to talk about it. Um, but I am fascinated by it. And I think that as the inner, and we're going to get into the spiritual thing, but I mean, as the energy of the earth shifts, it really is about being lighter, right? We're talking about vibration. And I'm sorry, I went the wrong way with the, the map of consciousness. And 
you know, uh, raising your vibration is about becoming more lighter, lighter in your energy bodies, lighter in your consciousness, lighter in everything. So having excellent mobility and range of motion and functional strength and core, you know, low body fat, that kind of stuff is so big, dude. Like you're really on the verge of like a, just a gigantic, like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Just like an epic launch of people looking to do this because you know the whole old school fit bro gym bro bodybuilding eat five or six times a day shit is all going out the window now and now it's all about again you know fasting smaller amounts of food you know um regardless of your belief you know plant-based i mean there's just there's so many things that are about making lighter the body the mental mm -hmm. and physical bodies, of course, the spiritual bodies that you're right, you're right at the right place at the right time. But talk about the revolution in mobility. <clears throat> yeah, well, you kind of referenced the map of consciousness behind you. And for some people, they, they might hear that. And they're like, Yeah, that's my jam. Like, I, I resonate with that. And other people are like, I don't know, that sounds a little airy fairy or whatever. Ooh. So like a yeah. one, one way that I think about kind of raising your level of consciousness or raising your vibration is becoming more self-aware. Right. We all, you don't have to be, you don't have to have any spiritual beliefs whatsoever if that's not your thing, but you can know that there's a difference between the level of self-awareness of say a child versus a teenager versus an adult versus someone who's an adult who is working on themselves, like has an inner practice. So in that sense, you can see that there's a, a raising of a level of self-awareness, of self-understanding of, of consciousness. And I view that a mobility practice, just like a meditation practice or any kind of spiritual practice, is something that brings more self-awareness. You, if you are on a regular basis massaging your body, stretching it, moving it in different ways, learning how it works, learning what it likes, what it doesn't like, one, you're going to feel lighter and better. Um, but you're also going to be so much more aware of what's happening in your body so that when the inevitable breakdowns that come in life, which are going to come, none of us make it out alive, as they say, like you're not going to uh, get to your 80s, 90s, and 100 years old and feel as perfect as you did when you were 19 or whatever. So when the breakdowns come, what can you do about it? And, and would you rather have the power and the control in your hands to know what to do about it? Would you, would you rather have that education or would you rather it'd be like, ah, oh, something's breaking down. Doctor, like, fix right. it. Which is what most people Mo do, by the way. Right. But it doesn't have to be that way because of this mobility revolution because you can learn how to stretch things and you'll feel better. You can learn how to massage things and you'll feel better. You can learn how to do, you know, more sophisticated band distracted joint mobility techniques from physical therapy and such like that. But basically, if you learn how to stretch strengthen and massage those are three of the major things that you can do to help yourself you can't chiropractic yourself you can't acupuncture yourself um, there's other things with nutrition and hydration and spiritual practice and stuff that make you feel good but like physically biomechanically massaging stretching and strengthening are three of the big pillars that's why in the kind of this methodology that i teach i call, I call it the tissue work stretching and re-education or tsr system because those are like the big rocks to me the big pillars that i think everyone should learn and um and that would just empower them so much to deal with any injuries and breakdowns that come in life so that's kind of what i mean when i say mobility revolution it's putting the power back in your hands learning a skill set it's kind of like going back to college for a couple of years to learn these skills but then once you have them you know you have them for life hey guys it's jay campbell the founder of tot revolution and the creator of optimized forever the world's number one premium access group for men and women looking for information to the tip of the spear on hormone optimization. For $49.95 a month, you will get access to the greatest Facebook group that I know of with the world's best doctors, subject matter experts, and all sorts of amazing people schooled to the highest levels in understanding how to balance and optimize male and female hormones. You can find out and sign up at optimizedforever.com. There's two levels, $49.95, that gets you access to me every week, for an Ask Me Anything, where I bring on the world's best subject matter experts and, of course, physicians to answer your questions, and also free access to all of the premium content webinars that I have done and will ever do, and then, of course, access to the group. And for half that price at $24.95, you get access to the Facebook group. Please check out OptimizedForever.com and sign up as soon as possible. Have a great day. Speaking of colleges, there won't be 
many colleges for much longer. Have you seen some of the articles that have come out about the lawsuits, man? My God. Uh, I've heard a little bit, but I haven't heard about lawsuits. Well, I'll, just, but I, I'll, just, I'll just mention this, but I mean, obviously, you know, I want to stay on the, the stuff you're talking about. I'm, I'm going to become a fan of yours now, by the way, because I really like what you have to say. Uh, and I've kind of let my mobility fall to the, to the wayside, I, I would say, in the last like six or eight months. I mean, my fitness, my nutrition, I mean, I have everything really, really dialed. I mean, it's the lifestyle that I live, but um, my mobility can be improved. So I'm definitely going to uh, take you up on some of the stuff that you do. But uh, just colleges, you know, getting back to your point, and, and again, it goes back to my overall uh, or overarching point about people that can teach things online are going to do really, really well through this because assuming we keep our internet. However, they're, they're saying that, um, you know, that like for the second semester of like a lot of the Ivy League schools and some of the big, most very expensive private schools, COVID shut it down, right? So all these people that are paying fifty or $60,000, you know, for their kids or whatever for tuition are like, uh, I want a refund. My kids didn't go to school and colleges are basically saying. Oh. <laughs> so, I mean, imagine, dude, colleges are done. Most yeah. people cannot truly, you know, I, I, the, the term I come up with is chaos theory. You know, if you remember the old first Jurassic Park with Jeff Goldblum talking about chaos theory, yeah. drop pits, you know, in the glass and the reverberations and you don't know. But like, that's essentially where we're at right now with the global economy. There are so many moving pieces and parts that most people have no ability to be a complex second or third order thinker. And if you are, and there are very few of those, especially now because of technology teaches people not to be critical thinkers, but if you are a second and third order thinker, you realize that there's going to be massive promise and opportunity that's going to come out of this implosion. Mm -hmm. But you can't, unfortunately, ask the matrix holders and keepers and shapers, you know, the people that have been beholden to this old, archaic, antiquated, brick and mortar, retail, whatever you want to call it, business world that is now imploding, crumbling, literally disintegrating. You can't ask them what's going to happen because they're going to tell you that, oh, everything is going to be great in a month and they're going to turn the light switch back on and everything is going to be back the way it was. And we both know that that's not the case. And again, yeah. where I want to go with this right now is, as I was telling you off air, there was a really good article that I read last night about right now the earth is in the collective dark night of the soul. And if you don't know what that means, in your, well, if you're watching my show, it's probably a good chance that you do know what that means because I've talked about it a number of times. But if you're a new casual observer and you just joined the Jay Campbell podcast, first off, thank you for sh signing up. If you're a fan, a big fan of Shane, then I appreciate you watching this. Um, but the dark night of the soul for most people is like when you face that epic unravelment of your personal state of being whatever it could be. You could go to jail, it could be divorce, your company could crumble, you could get severely injured and lose ability or range of motion. I mean, there's a number of ways to define it, but right now, essentially, with what's happening, we are, we're faced with this dark night of the soul. And, you know, people are in fear, people are re-examining their lives, people have lost their jobs, they've been displaced, they have to look at things from a different perspective, they don't know how they're going to pay their bills. I mean, there's a million different angles, but for me and you right now to, to, to really center this on the spiritual component and to really get deep in this podcast, um, I think it's important that people recognize that we are so much more shame than just our physical bodies, right? Like so many people, when you're focused on the external and when you're focused on the external, you have no inner practice. You do, you, you're not doing contemplation. You're not doing meditation. You're not in nature grounding. You don't have any mindful training or mindfulness strategies or structure to allow you to balance yourselves in this time right now, which is essentially darkness. You know, whoever the leaders are of this planet are essentially pushing everyone into this box, right? Like they're creating a strategy of making people wear masks. By the way, I saw something, it's also in that media, in that article, but then I clicked in of a deep link in the article and it talked about just the idea of masks and how that creates fear-based thinking, right? Because when you can't see another human being, as you and I can see each other eye to eye right now, even virtually, you go into a store, you go into a place and everybody's wearing masks, you don't know how that person is looking at you. And so it just intuitively teaches the parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system to be in fear, especially if you have no inward practice. So anyway, my point is, is that 
it's very, very important right now for those of us that do have an inner spiritual practice to focus on it, to recognize that we are so much more than our physical existences, our physical beings, these meat suits, you know, at base essence, we're just worrying electrons, we're plasmatic fire, we're, you know, energy, however you want to phrase it, and energy doesn't die. So it's like, you got to have a perspective, hopefully, that this is just another, you know, experience that we're having mm-hmm. in our incarnation in this life and don't label it as this horrible you know cataclysmic blah 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 you know insert whatever negative adjective and look at it as just like hmm, this is interesting i lost mm-hmm. my job or i'm gonna have to move or you know blank insert negative if that's how you want to label it but it's really just an experience to learn from and i think if we could get more people to to see that that mm this fear based mentality that is so pervasive right now in society. And it's obviously it's probably just as pervasive in Colombia. And I don't know, I'm going to let you talk about that, but you know, here in Southern California, dude, you go, you go to a store and people look at you if you don't wear a mask or you come into the store cause you have to wear the mask to come in and then you drop it down and people look at you like, I mean, it's insanity. Like where this tyranny and this servile complacency has now come into people. And I, and again, I, look at those people as having no inner path, inward spiritual path because if you did you wouldn't care because your focus is your own focus but anyway your thoughts on all the things that i just said which was i know probably a lot but just <laughs> just just where we are and how a spiritual practice can better equip you to deal with this now mm-hmm yeah well i mean i think any way that you language what's happening right now whether it's we're humanity is passing through a dark night of the soul or you know if you're a historian then you know that all civilizations rise and then they fall because they overreach their you know they use too much of their resource base and then there's a stepwise decline um not overnight it's not like collapse often happens um in the blink of an eye and everyone's just killing each other in the streets and it's just chaos like a movie often happens over a period of a hundred years or more historically depending if you're studying rome or this place or that place um but you can say that we're passing through a dark night or in buddhism they talk about um you know a a dark age that humanity passes through and these like huge historical time frames so whether you're saying it's a dark age or the collapse or the slow decline of the industrial age or whatever you want to say, we can all agree that we're passing through some interesting and challenging times. And what do we do with that? Because uh, there's an equation that I like that I think I got from the book success principles by Jack Canfield, where he says event plus response equals outcome. So the outcome is not a foregone conclusion. Right. It's not like this is happening and this sucks. Right. It's this is happening what's your response going to be? And then, then you'll find out what the outcome is. Like, for example, when I had my back injury and I had these hip problems, that, that, that was what was so. Shane, you're really injured right now. You can't move. Your girlfriend's putting on your socks and shoes and you're 26. It'd be very easy for my brain to go to, this sucks. This is the worst. Why me? Right. Victim consciousness, but, right. But I literally was repeating in my mind because my dad gave us like affirmations when we were kids and it just like popped into my mind. Like, wow. how is this the universe conspiring on my behalf? And I knew it wasn't like necessarily absolutely true in the ultimate sense, but it's a hell of a useful belief. And it made all the actions that I took after that much more useful and much more productive. And my mind was so much more at peace with the fact that I, my body was really messed up at a very young age that it turned into now a service that I'm giving the world where I'm helping all these people that have the same problem. And I have all this lived experience to help them out of that problem. So that was my response and the outcome was help for other people and success for me. So like a spiritual, I didn't, I didn't have necessarily what would traditionally be called a spiritual practice at the time, even though I guess I had these affirmations and I had these, these sort of belief systems that had been kind of like built into me through different seminars that I've done with landmark education and books that I've read and all these different things. Um, but I think that it's important that you have something that gives you a amount of inner peace to then go be of service to the world. Like if you can get to the place where you can say, okay, what's really real here now what's possible. So like both, I think, I think in one book they called it the Stockdale paradox of like confronting the most 
brutal facts of reality because like General Stockdale was in like a, right. a Holocaust prison camp and he, he was willing to confront the brutal facts of his situation and remain balanced, equanimous, optimistic, and with a sense of purpose or service that allowed him to have something to live for. So for me, I find that my spiritual practice far and away in this day and age is meditation, specifically a, a body-centered meditation called Vipassana in the sure. SN Goenka tradition with the 10-day Vipassana retreats and stuff like that. So I've done a lot of those, done a lot of service in that organization. I lived at a meditation center for eight months, do longer 20, 30, longer courses, 30-day courses. And, um, and that's my core spiritual practice that it allows for a, a embodied felt sense in me that whatever happens, I can dance with it. I can flow with it. I can, I don't have to pretend it's not happening. I don't have to be all rosy and optimistic and be like, everything's clapping around me. And I'm like, and it's fine and nothing's wrong. <laughs> and like, actually I'm super tense. It's actually like, okay, what's real now? What's possible? Let's, let's dance with it. Let's play with it. I love your answers, man. Um, landmark. My wife went to that. What, 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 what are your thoughts? How many did you do of those? How many of those did you do? I did like their whole curriculum. My entire oh, wow. twenty, my entire entire twenties was spent on like personal development and stuff like that. So what um, got you in? I gotta ask you to stop you because you're please. obviously advanced. So what made you? Because I asked this question because I'm fascinated. Because so you told me that your dad gave you affirmations. First off, bro, that's fucking amazing. Because my dad <laughs> did not give me affirmations. Now, my dad is 74 years old, and for the people on this podcast, they already know because I talk about my dad too much, but he is a cantankerous old man who is probably right here, like between 125 and 175. He's a multimillionaire. That's his focus. He still wants to fight. You know what I mean? He's like, he's had his hip replaced. I mean, I it, go on and on, but my dad was a brilliant man, very successful, came from, you know, as I call it, Appalachian, hard scrabble, white trash, no money, right. parents and no education. And he, you know, built himself from ashes, you know, but he never got where you and I are on. He's done, don't, never done any of work. Doesn't understand it. Doesn't even see a value in it, but you know, he can, he can quote you, um, Locke and Rousseau or Thomas Aquinas or anything. I mean, he's a brilliant man. He's, he's still there, but he's just, you know, he's trapped, but it's cool that you had a want to, to do personal and self-development in your 20s, where did that come from? Because I never had that. I didn't even have any idea about any of that stuff until I was like literally 41 and met my wife. Hmm. I think I always had enough self-awareness to know when I was imprisoning myself. So I could tell when I was socially stopped. Like I knew it was weird for me when I was a teenager or young 20s that I felt awkward in conversation with people and I felt this like invisible armor and guardedness and macho posturing and different weird things that we humans do um, in relation with other human beings. And I had enough self-awareness to know that I didn't like that and I wanted to do something about that. And so I started reading self-help books, The Power of Now, awesome. Jack, Can Jack Canfield's Success Principles was a big kind of Kickstarter for me. And then my dad um, mentioned Landmark to me because he's been on the personal growth train for much of his life as well and okay, he so said, that's where you got it from then so your dad motivated you a little bit in that capacity you got that your dad was yeah. like pushing himself to improve himself yeah but i i was i was young and rebellious enough that if he suggested something i would do the opposite really? Fuck off, yeah. so it wasn't until like my college young 20s years where if uh, credit to him he didn't invite me to read this book or take this course in a pushy you need this fix yourself kind of way. It was like, Hey, I benefit from this. I think you really enjoy it. Awesome. If you ever, if you ever want to do it, I'd even pay for it. Cause I think it's that valuable. And I was like, all right, well that's pretty non-threatening. And, and I did want to grow and kind of overcome my own inner barriers. So I did it, loved it, did the entire curriculum, all their courses and stuff like that and found them very, very helpful. Hey guys, it's Jay Campbell, author, entrepreneur, founder of trtrevolution.com. Look, I created this book this year Guaranteed Shredded, which you can find and read much more about at guaranteedshredded.com. This is the result of 20 plus years of biohacking, hormone hacking, neurohacking, and every other hack and ninja tip and tactic that anyone could employ to get dirty, super ultra levels of fat loss, okay? 
This is literally the, the metabolic blowtorch diet amplified to the max, okay? 10X, 50X, whatever you want to call it. Um, again, it's my entire life's work as far as understanding how to get down to the lowest level of body fat possible. It works for both males and females. Um, if you're not an advanced user, I definitely recommend you go to blowtorchdiet.com and look at that book first and then progress on. But if you are an advanced dieter and you're looking for absolutely guaranteed the lowest levels of body fat but done in a healthy context in the shortest amount of time, guaranteedshredded.com. Check it out. That's cool, man. Um, because all my self-help, I mean, obviously I've done a lot of stuff since my early 40s, but you know, my stuff mostly was just reading. Mm. I have a really very blessed, I'm nearly a photographic, I always tell people I have nearly a photographic memory of things that I'm interested in. Mm. <laughs> if I'm not interested in it, I don't remember it. Uh, but no, that's awesome. I mean, I have a giant wall over here of like most of the people that are important, you know, Nightingale. I mean, I have, I don't know, Jim Rohn. I mean, I have most of them and I've read most of their stuff, but like I was self taught I never went to any of that, but my wife went to all that. She went beyond Landmark too. She went to... Um, I think there's like two other groups that you probably are aware of. But it's not slipping my mind. But anyway, um, I want to finish this um, with obviously you being able to promote your work and promote, you know, where people can find you online. But let's talk a little bit about meditation and contemplation before we end uh, and how important that is right now. Because as a guy who used to be a very, very big meditator and now is really just a very focused contemplator. And as you know, you're a Hawkins student too. You know, he talks about the difference of those. Um, I feel that, and again, there's no judgment in the statement, but I feel that anyone, as long as you understand how to silence your mind to get to a place where there's no distraction and you can literally just be one with nature of God, whatever, you know, you're, you're a happy place. You're, again, just complete in the source field. Um, it doesn't really matter um, whether you're doing Vipassa meditation, whether you're a person going into a, you know, as I call it, the, the, uh, the blackout chamber and you have know, just nothing for like five days. You know, I have my friends that do that too. You know, Aubrey Marcus talks about that. But um, it really is just about you getting to a place of complete silence and devotion. And again, hopefully you're devoted to, you know, beings of light. You know, obviously it's, I, I just externalized it by pointing up, but you know, just brainwashed to point up. But, um, but the reality is, is that to me, and I want your take is, Without being able, especially today in this distraction world of technology and bombardment and social media and all these things, if you can't do that, you're so poorly equipped, especially right now, you know, with, with, with what is happening with the fear. You know, talk about like what that, you know, that, that your internal mindful practice has done for you as a being, um, you know since you started incorporating it and, and why it's so important now to, to, to pick up that type of practice. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, like I, I also have studied evolutionary psychology a lot. And so that's kind of where a lot of my, at least the way I language things comes from. So I view like kind of like the fundamental difficulty that we all have is that we have a brain that has different drives within it. So it's not like our brain just instinctually and naturally pulls us to things that are good for us. Like obviously that's why we have drug addiction and sex addiction and all kinds of addiction. And that's why we shout at people when we don't want to, we get angrier than we want to, we get more lustful than we want to, we get annoyed when we really want to be loving. And that's because we have all these, I would call them animalistic instincts from our, the deeper parts of our brain that um, release chemicals within our mind and body that then impel us or compel us to to do things um, which aren't necessarily in our highest good. Right. And so how do we combat that? Like, um, you know, you can study psychology, you can get coaching from wise mentors, but the thing that I found most profoundly helpful is to systematically observe my mind and body repeatedly. So I have a practice where I meditate an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening, and I go on longer retreats where I'm meditating 10 hours a day for multiple days on end. And that self-observation leads to self-purification in the sense that I start to observe my bad habit patterns of mind and body 
and naturally sort of let them go. It's like an, it's like a course correction. It's like sure. if you just observe yourself enough, but not on a superficial level. Everyone everyone knows that that you should observe yourself and decide: is this a good thing to do, Shane, or is this a bad thing? To right. Do? That's like the one on one level of self observation. What happens when you sit down to meditate or just be with your your mind and your emotions and your body sensations? is you start to catch those negative emotions and bad habit patterns much, 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 much earlier. And therefore you can cut them off or relax them or let them go, relax your nervous system before that little ember becomes a raging forest fire and you end up screaming and shouting at someone or following that lust and cheating on your spouse or being so motivated by competition that you spend your entire life chasing the, the almighty dollar because you just were being driven by this inner urge that you didn't know was running your life. Right. So it's that, it's that systematic and, and regular observation of your mind and your body sensations in your body on subtler and subtler and subtler and subtler levels, which you can only do in a formal practice. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to just observe myself in my day-to-day life. It's, it's, it's moving too fast. There's too much going on that you need separate times to quietly observe your mind and emotions and start to use this amazing capacity that the human brain has for pattern recognition to notice like, oh, when I feel that subtle sensation of tension in my chest and in my throat, that means that I'm getting irritated and I'm about to say something stupid. So, so that's why a, a meditation practice specifically in a body-based one is something that I've personally found really, really helpful. And um, I think it's so important in this day and age because, um, like we said earlier, event plus response equals outcome. But if you can't control how you respond to situations because you don't have enough self-awareness or you don't have enough repetition of practicing relax, relaxing your tensions and your reactions, then you won't be able to respond in a skillful way. You'll just react. Right. Instead, of, instead of acting skillfully, you'll react in a blind and often harmful way. Beautiful, man. It's been a profound podcast, truthfully, tru- truly. I really appreciate you coming on. Um, before I let you go and I tell people how you can help, they can work with you, just give a couple of things that you would tell someone right now. Um, who's not familiar with your work, um, who has obviously not been, a, you know, so, somebody who's normally in shape, they take good care of themselves, their mobility is important to them, they have a practice, but they've been out of the gym, right? They're basically out of sorts um, and have been now for, what, two months, right? So they're, everybody's life has been kind of, not everybody, but a lot of people who go to a gym or have a, you know, a physical fitness practice that is predicated on them going somewhere else they haven't been able to go to. So give a couple of just like really strategic solutions for people to, you know, concern themselves or focus on right now to improve their mobility and their range of motion, just like if they're doing it from their house, I assume, because that's where most people, I assume, are going to have it. Mm-hmm. Well, if you don't, I mean, if you don't have a lot of equipment available to you, then your mobility practice will have to necessarily be very simplistic, but that's great because uh, it's good to not have to rely on a lot of external things to do what you need to do. So um, just having a basic, I mean, it would be a good time to explore different styles of stretching, um, for example, because most people just know just regular passive static stretching, or maybe some more sophisticated people know a little bit of like, PNF stretching, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation where you contract and then relax. Um, but if you've got extra time and you don't have a lot of tools because you're at home, then you can start exploring other ways of stretching and mobilizing the body. For example, in the martial arts, they use something called ballistic stretching where it's kind of like little pulses at end range. And it's a whole system of stretching. I've got a whole program just about ballistic stretching that I borrowed from Kung Fu, Kung Fu and martial arts and Wushu and stuff like that. Um, so explore different styles of stretching, ballistic stretching, loaded stretching, other ways of mobilizing. Um, but if you do have some tools or, or if you can order them, if you're in a place where you can order them online and have them delivered, then um, it can also be a, a cool time to go beyond the foam roller. So a lot of people that are probably would consider themselves pretty savvy in the world of fitness and stuff be like, I got a foam roller, like I mobilize. Foam rolling equals mobility, which like with everything, there's always a deeper or interesting level. So, so that's why on my YouTube channel, for example, I've got like 250 free videos using all kinds of weird, intricate little tools for different parts of the body. And I, I believe that to be helpful, not because you need a million tools to feel good in your body. You don't like you can just stretch and move and feel pretty darn great. But just like a car mechanic can 
fix the car better, if they've got just a few more tools, I think human beings can kind of work on different areas. And how do you address like the deep attachment point of your adductors? You can't really foam roll that. You can't foam roll your neck. You need a specialized tool for some parts of your body. So explore some new styles of stretching. Maybe if you can explore some new mobility tools and integrate that into your movement and um, fitness practice, like maybe superset your mobility with your fitness so you can be really efficient. I'm like very masculine in that sense that I love efficiency. Right. So, so um, you don't have to like have this whole separate one hour practice in addition to all the other things you want to do in your life. You can integrate it into your movement or fitness practice that you already have have and get the best of both worlds what are the two uh, more advanced mobility tools beyond foam rolling that you recommend that can be ordered and say off amazon or something like right now um depends on the area but the the first ones that come to mind are the trigger point quad baller which i find the shape and the texture is maybe better than a foam roller and I also I actually have that right now in my house, in my nice. office. As I've been talking, nice. I'm literally feeling the tension. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Or another one would be the Jack Knobber 2, which looks like a little jack that like, you know, the kids used to play in the olden days, play right. jacks. It's right. like, it's like that. And you can use that in some really intricate ways on your lateral hip, your deep hip rotators hip rotators and stuff like that. Nice. Um, I actually created a specialized stick, which you can't get on Amazon, but you can get on my website. That is really for people that have hip impingement. It's called the hip stick and it's for the hips, obviously. Nice. And especially the adductor attachment points because of that muscle group tends to get really junky in athletes that yeah. get this hip impingement feeling in the gym. And this gets it way better than a foam roller, or most other tools. Shane, man, you've been a wealth of knowledge. And uh, like I said, I totally appreciate um, you coming on the podcast. If somebody wants to work with you, connect with you, obviously purchase from you, what's the best way they can do that? Um, the website is gotrom, R-O-M.com, gotrom.com, kind of like got milk, but ROM, for those that don't know, stands for range of motion, ROM. So gotrom.com or just Google gotrom and you'll find me or the faifix.com if you've got hip and pendrin. Beautiful. And your YouTube channel is youtube.com forward slash got wrong, correct? Yeah. Okay. Awesome, man. I truly appreciate you coming on. Um, ladies and gentlemen, of course, as always, please support the amazing people and individuals that come on this fine show, this new Jay Campbell podcast. Support Shane of course, down, go to his website, gotrom.com. And of course, um, if you're somebody that has a hip impingement, buy his product. It sounds cool. Brother, I really appreciate you. For everybody, remember, you. remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys all very, very soon.